Welcome to Old Fashioned Finance, the podcast that mixes cocktails and high finance. I'm your host, Caleb Frankert, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow money muddler, Jason Burnell. Caleb, can a podcast about finance be entertaining? Not without alcohol. All right, let's mix it up. Let's. Also, not without ghosts, Jason. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> That was now I feel like we that need like a ridiculous. smoky cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's warm. It is warm. I said not without ghosts because we're kind of continuing with our Christmas theme. Yeah. It is Christmas time now. I'm reading Christmas books, watching Christmas Ooh. movies. Yes. Yeah, getting into the whole thing. Yeah. Us too. This is one of it's my good. favorite books of all time, and there are a lot of film adaptations. So we're we're gonna find a way, Jason, to to bring a Christmas carol into our uh, our little program today, an old fashioned Christmas Carol. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of those stories that I've read to my children. Uh huh. You know, it's a good one that it's been a little while. I don't know if I've got the younger ones, but it is. It's ex. I mean, it's I excellent. It. I'm a big Charles Dickens fan. Um, yeah, and I I realize he has lots of other Christmas stories. He well, he's got a, a lot of. Here's the deal. There's a lot of criticism when it comes to Dickens, even readers, right, mm-hmm. who think mm-hmm. he's self indulgent and. He got paid by the word or whatever, right? <laughs> so he could be a little lengthy, but gosh darn it. I feel like he could capture something of the human condition. So I, I think he was pretty much a self-proclaimed atheist, but I'm mm-hmm, telling you, mm-hmm. like he he was almost there with some things. I, I think when you read his stuff, oh yeah, he really got the depravity of man. The problem is he, he stayed, I mean, not so much in his stories, but I think in his personal life stayed in the, the depressing side of that. Unfortunately. Without finding hope on the other side. I mean, we are still talking about him, and he died in 1870 for the record. Yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> we have self indulgent or not. Be- yeah, we have things a little better now. Uh, I could see being depressed. And you know, a lot of his writing yeah, is I that mean, London, gray, yeah, yep. cold, depressing. I've learned a lot from, from reading his books. This one is maybe the shortest of his books, but maybe had the most impact on me. Yeah, um, but I mean, even the film versions of these things, yeah. they could be kind of like, I mean, even the Disney version, my kids are like yeah, the, pretty scared of. The I Jim mean, Carrey one, the yeah, animated one. Yeah. yeah. Which is like probably my favorite one. I really like it. Yeah. I really like that one a lot. I Now, I love the Muppets uh, Christmas <laughs> Carol and a, a coworker and yes. I almost came to blows over this I know, yesterday. I know. She hates the Muppets. She pretty much triggered us, though. We turned into the two old guys. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. I, I'm sorry. I don't know how you don't like the Muppets. Well, we're questioning her job here right now. <laughs> I, I guess I'm drawing the line for listeners here. Um, I just I I love the Muppets. I think they're great. But even, we even grew up. Movie. We grew up right smack dab. They're so freaking funny. Yeah, I laughed at them when I was a kid. I still laugh at them. Yeah. Like I can. You can watch that with your kids, and there's. I don't. I, I don't mean adult humor as in vulgar humor. No, I mean there's no. humor for all ages, and the Christmas Carol is no no yeah, exception. It, this was, it came out in 1992. But even that movie, a yeah. Muppets oh, movie, yeah. had it, some scary elements. Definitely, in it, right? It's definitely. a scary story. It's a yeah. ghost story. It is a ghost. You know, story. like in in the uh, what what's the Christmas song? Uh, there'll be tales of the. Mm-hmm. Some glories and oh yeah, scary there's, ghost stories, stories of yeah, Christmas. Yeah. yeah. I think long, they're referencing that story, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I got there eventually. You know, I, it's, that it's in one of those songs. Come on, Michael Buble, where are you? <laughs> We're going to try to pull some money lessons out of the Christmas Carol. All today. right. I'm looking forward to this. This is good. I am too. It just it feels cozy. It feels at home. It does. But there, this is such... I mean, the Christmas Carol... A uh, Christmas Carol? Is it the or a? Uh? A Christmas Carol? A Christmas Carol is... Man, full of life lessons. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, for us to draw some parallels with money, it's not a stretch. I will say this. This, this podcast is not going to be like our commentary on the human condition. No. This is not going no. to be like, here are life lessons. It's not going to be like moral life lessons. From- yeah, it's not, it's not going to be a moralistic <laughs> kind of a like... No, we're not trying no, to. We're we're just all. saying we know we can pull out of those lessons out of this story. Mm-hmm. But there's there are some good money lessons that... Look, money kind of uh, permeates into all areas of our life, yeah. right? Yep. And so it, it is going to branch into other areas. But what what lessons do we draw from money out of A Christmas Carol? It's, look, we're on episode 87. Right. We got to come up with new stuff. <laughs> no, I think this is great. We're trying, right? No. So uh, 
our drink for today, I'm really excited about. I was really excited about after I made it. I'm not sure. It's a smoking bishop. Mm. Why? I well, mean, if you've read the book at the end of a yes. Christmas Carol, and by the way, don't be intimidated by Dickens. No, this one is this is it's a very good, this small. Is a good. This is a good spot to start. Yeah, because you know you've watched the four TV versions. You so know you, the story, right? Uh, so you can follow along, and it's not a long book at all. It's it's a very small book. Yeah. Um, but at the end of this very small book, jam packed full of lessons. I don't want to blow it for anybody who's never heard this, but uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Mm-hmm. You know, has a change of heart, and he talks about getting together with Bob over uh, a cup of, or a glass of, or a bowl of, whatever. Right, right. About getting together over some smoking bishop. Mm. Okay, so this is a Victorian. You know, era. I forgot about this. I, I don't even, I didn't even remember it, and I've read the book a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, no, but um, it's coming back to me now. You're right. It, it's a Victorian era port punch. So I, when we come up with cocktails for this time of year, what I'm finding a lot of are there are a lot of punches. Por- it, ports and ports uh and mold wine kind yeah. of oh yeah yeah orange like yeah but this is an old drink that's apparently stood the test of time now you don't have <laughs> you don't have many people walking into a bar ordering a smoking bishop if you had a bartender that said yep coming right up yeah but drinks have gotten obnoxious you well know? it's true so well let, let's get into what we're drinking here a little okay. bit uh before it cools down because this is a dr- uh, drink served warm jason what we're drinking today is pretty light okay we have quite a few ingredients, but we start with a ruby port. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go with the, because we didn't do the whole punch bowl, right? We just no, made uh, no. a glass We didn't need a punch bowl of this stuff. <laughs> so we pared this down. But uh, so a 750 milliliter, that's a regular wine bottle of ruby port, another bottle of a red wine. And when talking to our local liquor store owner, who uh, when I don't know what the heck we're, we're doing with some of the stuff, he kind of, especially in the wine Sure. Side yeah. of things. He's, we he's trust his guy. judgment. He he gave us one. Uh, it was it was just a red blend. Mm-hmm. I think we used a barefoot. He said that's what people use for punches, sangrias, all that kind of stuff. So a ruby port, a red wine, just a little bit of water, half a cup of brown sugar. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Now you're getting quarter me. teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. Ooh, interesting. I love ginger. A quarter teaspoon of allspice. Yep, I'm for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, ground allspice. A quarter teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Man, I didn't know there was this much in this. Yeah, and then if you're doing the big punch version, four oranges and 20 whole cloves. Okay, so we pared this down. As far as mixing the drink, pretty easy. You put the wines in, put the the sugars, the allspice, you know, the nutmeg and all that stuff. You Mm -hmm. mix it up and you just bring it over a simmer, heat it up. Okay. Okay. For the garnish, that's where the oranges and the cloves come in. We did this on a much smaller scale, but we cut up some orange slices and... Punch some cloves in it. Yep. Now you can bake these in the oven. Actually, get them nice and nice like and brown, smoking hot. Yeah. Yeah. But we we didn't do that. So that would release all that orangey, clovey stuff. Yeah, that kind of makes some sense. Yeah. What we did here was, if you're making one at home and you want to just try it, and you've got the stuff laying around, which you probably do, if you're in your kitchen listening, you can make <laughs> this. Uh, we did two ounces of port, two ounces of red wine, two pinches of brown sugar, a pinch of ginger, a pinch of allspice, a pinch of nutmeg, an orange slice. With two cloves. I'm looking think? forward to this. Let's try it out. Whoa. That's delightful. That's warming. Oh. Isn't I just it? He's got a hug. <laughs> Not like the Kentucky hug, right? No. But no. Wow. Okay. So it's I don't kind of... like wine. No. Okay. I'm not a big wine drinker. You know, there's always, it's that our resident wine expert who lived in Italy. Yeah. What always, it's the tans. It's the, the tannins. Yeah. The, the t- headache. Yeah. The, the headache, headache stuff. stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, there's something about, there's no aftertaste to that. That is great. You know, if, if you get like kind of a, a wow. red blend, it's probably going to be a blend of, you know, like cabs and Merlots, like a drier wine, mm-hmm. which gives this, I think, a lot of that that mouthfeel that you have going. Yeah. But the port, a, a port is a sweet wine. That's a right. dessert wine. Right. So you get that. You get yeah, that but when, I, there. when you set this down next to me, I thought the, my initial smell response was that I'm not going to like that. Mm-hmm. And... That's really good. It is. Um, you know, I'm the I'm, little pumpkin pie spices that go in there which with I, it. You know, that's just my calling card right there. It's so good. The, I, there's one on here that sounds really interesting to me. It's called a smoking archbishop. Oh, so cr- crank it up a notch. Let me guess. Throw bourbon in there. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we could try that. No, later. it's got ginger wine. So like, I don't a, even know what that is. It's probably like a ginger beer. Okay. And raisins. I could definitely see raisins in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But this is, dude, mix this up in a in a punch bowl. 
This yeah, this would be a yeah. good Christmas party yeah, drink. No, Make that, sure it's served warm. Yep. Um, that's not bad. I that's could see where it should go. It should be in a punch bowl. You should have big oranges floating in there. I D- could see why this was a popular Victorian era. Definitely. You know, cold, rainy London Christmas warm, Carol kind of a drink. Warm you right up, right? Yeah. Really. Gosh, that's great. I, I like that. I am delightfully surprised. Two drinks in a row. You gave me vodka last week. I didn't now- think you would like either of these. <laughs> Just That's wait, great. Just wait till the wait till the next episode. I, would, I really, I, I, would I really this. have some concerns about that one. I would, I would make this. I'm home. thinking at the office Christmas cold. party. <laughs> okay, so it, what it sort of reminds me of is not not from a flavor standpoint, but when it gets cold out, and you've seen me do it here at mm-hmm, the office, mm-hmm. and they, they all make fun of me here with my little my tea light warmer, from yeah, my, oh, my yeah. brandy warmer. Oh yeah, you know it's a cold day. Yeah, uh, I, I might like to warm up some brandy, and it yeah. just it feels cozy and. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it feels like a hug. safe. A hug. Yes. Yeah. It feels like a warm blanket. Yeah. I, I could see heating these up on a cold day at the office even. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's great. Sitting in my office with all the lights off. I feel like, like I you could do. throw cranberries in there. You could do all kinds of stuff. I, I think it's a really good canvas. Like, you, you know, yeah. you, you, you know, you could throw raisins in. you could throw cranberries in. Yeah. I'll bet like rosemary sprigs or something oh, like that. Yeah. Mint, maybe. This is not my wheelhouse. You know me. I'm normally a bourbon neat guy. Right. right. Uh, and the way we make cocktails on this podcast, we err on the side of boozy for sure. For sure. This is not boozy. But you, it's you mostly could, wine. You could drink a good good bit of this and feel okay, I yeah. think. But it's a, it's mostly wine, though. So you have to you do have to remember the headache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into this a little bit. We're, we're stretching it here. But like yeah. I said, hey. We're 80 some episodes in. Dang it. We <laughs> got to create content. So, <laughs> part of this is about having fun. Dang it. And That's I like right. A Christmas Carol. That's right. Just like a Christmas story and all those other fun things. Oh, if yeah. You can't have fun on the pad- podcast. Where can you have fun? This so, was mandatory fun. Absolutely. So, lesson one Jason, we're going to just break this up like the book. Of course. We're going to talk it was about brilliant to start with. Why change it? Right? Exactly. I'm not going to improve on Dickens. <laughs> We're going to talk about what we can learn. Okay. In lesson one, ghost of Christmas past. Ooh. We'll do ghost of Christmas present. Oh. And ghost of Christmas future. That's the scary that's one. That's the scary one. Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be kind of a, the format is a little bit loose here. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm going to kind of share with you the notes that I jotted down, what I kind of take out of this. Because this, this really is a story I reflect on. This time of year. Oh, definitely. Because I watch different variations of the movie. Yep. I try to read the book at least once a holiday season. And it, it does get you kind of introspective, right? Ghosts of Christmas Past. Okay. Ebenezer learned a lot from the Ghost of Christmas Past in this one, right? And you mm-hmm. learn a lot about Ebenezer in this too. Sure. You know, he's this crotchety, crabby old guy. And right, right. I think you, you kind of actually learn to feel sorry for him a little bit right. from his early days too. But, you know, the way I look at it is this. Money mistakes, okay? If you mm-hmm. can't learn from your past, Jason, you're, you're never going to get on the path to financial freedom, right? That's right. For I, sure. I put it this way. You know, this path to financial freedom, our financial plan is a marathon. It's mm-hmm. not a sprint. You are going to trip and fall. You're going to stub your toe. You're going to take two steps back and or two steps forward and three steps back sometimes. Yep, absolutely. But you've got to be able to learn from your mistakes. You've got to be able to look, you know, down the road. What's, what's the end game? Yeah, the, I mean... For me, it's like, you know, you don't want to like carry it around like financial, you know, lessons and baggage. Yeah. It's really a, an opportunity for you to go, wait. I mean, remember in our past episodes, we talked about when money habits start to form. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like eight years old. I mean, this right. is stuff that your parents taught you, <laughs> things you've been carrying your whole life. It It is important for you to go back and look and say, what has worked and what hasn't worked? When was I most financially sound and mm-hmm. when was I, you know not most financially sound and what were some of the things that I was doing okay and it may not even be that obvious yeah and you have to have the honesty to look at yourself and say okay where did I really drop the ball I've been it, financially it, stuck for 15 years yeah. what's what's the deal here well you know? and uh, so you got to be honest with yourself if you can't look at your behavior and say these are things that need to change like this is not going to get me where I need to go well, you know what they say, the definition of insanity is doing the same th- same thing over and over and expecting right. a different result, right? So all of this requires some introspection. It's kind of the theme, I think, of this time of year. For a, sure. A, a, a part of it, at Well, least. I mean, it's that anticipation part. And we have a new year coming, like you're thinking yeah. about goals and things you want to <laughs> do. You're probably thinking of resolutions that you're Revol- going to break in resolutions. February. <laughs> money is often one of them. Absolutely. It's one of the biggest uh, resolutions that we make is regarding money. But I mean, so. like in the, in the book, I mean... 
he they go all the way back to his childhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the and what formed him into what he became as an adult, a lot of heartache. Yeah. Right. Well, and a lot of it is the situation that you're born into. We know from money, mm -hmm. th there's a lot to be said about the situation that you're born into. That's right. not everything. Right. Right. It's harder for some. We, we talk about it all the time in the office. There are some people who are born on second base thinking that they hit a double. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, people that are born into financially responsible families with every opportunity to, to make it. And mm -hmm. some of those people do make it. And, you know, they think that they've, they've made themselves and that's not necessarily the case, but you know, there are other people who are born without these uh, opportunities and things like that, that, that does make, make who you are. It, it, it's a part of what makes you who you are from a money standpoint too, but it's not, that's not the end story. Right. 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 So think about people like maybe people from the business world that you look up to that have been bankrupt. Sure. Right. right? Did they learn from those mistakes? Did they come back stronger than ever? Right. I'm not saying that bankruptcy is a good plan. Right. You know, but you, you could be. Did they learn from their mistakes and Absolutely. do something different? Yeah. And I, yeah. there's definitely people like that. I mean, I think the one that pops into my mind is like the, you know, the Colonel Sanders of the world. You know, he was in his 60s mm -hmm. when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken and innovated. God something. bless him. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those <laughs> things. But, you know, I think in the in the book here, getting back to the story, it's like, you know, Scrooge chose success over relationships from a young age, from a young age. And that is um, I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons. It, money, money fights and money problems are terrible yeah. for for families, for friendships, for marriages. I think that is a very important lesson that we kind of glaze over on some of this stuff. Yeah, and it's a really good segue into our ghost of Christmas present. Ooh. Not Christmas presents. Oh, Christmas present. <laughs> I thought it was that time. <laughs> You're right. He chose that from a young age, right? He's going to yep. choose success over everything else. And quite frankly, he chose not to have relationships because they get in the way of, of success, right? Right, exactly. Rather than success getting in the way of relationships, it was the other way around. Yeah, exactly. But you know what I have written down here for what I kind of take out of money lessons learned from A Christmas Carol the present, you cannot be, it's, it's funny that you said that. We did not talk about this before no, we started recording. not at all. You were surprising me. <laughs> you cannot be so consumed with success that you miss out on opportunities. And I don't mean just financial opportunities, okay? Opportunities to forge relationships. Right. Opportunities to serve others who are around you right now that are in need, right? Yep. I, I think that there is, I again, I don't want to throw mud at anybody in our industry or in the you know, the financial coaching world, mm -hmm. there, there is a mentality, I think that is, and there is some truth to this too. You know, you got to get your affairs in order before you can help other people out. No. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't help people who are in front of you with opp opportunities to give and be generous and, and again, and this, help this now, book, right? the movies all kind of start off with the scene of, you know, charity trying to be given to others, but that's, financial charity, but it's also the charity of your time. Yeah. You know, your talents and some people just need to hear your perspective. And it is, again, when you're reflective on, I had an opportunity with, you know, a person in my life where I could have, it would have changed me or I would have changed their situation. You know, again, we cannot dismiss those things. Mm -hmm. It is a way to be wealthy beyond financial measure. Yeah. So here we are, two financial advisors taking the emphasis off of money. Being right. the, and, and honestly, so uh, I think this fits right in with this present, where you're at right now. So again, I'm, I'm not saying forget the past, learn from the past, but you are where you are. Right. Exactly. Okay. And, and you need to take the opportunities that are in front of you now, regardless of where you've been in the past. Right. Right. You have an opportunity to do better now. Yep. For yourself, for others. Yeah. Um, and, and it's the good, the best lesson there is, you know, just take the, think of the Marley, you know, metaphor here, uh -huh. you know, he's walking around with chains from his life, but we're here, we're present. We're able to change. Now is the time. Now is the time. And that's what he visited Scrooge for, right? Yeah. He and said, you better wake up, buddy. You, you know, it's interesting whenever he, uh, when the ghost takes him uh, around, uh, not just to find out what people think of him now, right, right, but to think of the opportunities of even an old curmudgeon who locks himself inside of his drafty office all the time and yep. shuts the world out, how many people he still impacts and has an opportunity 
to enrich their lives. He has the means, right? right? He has the opportunity. And we all have an opportunity regardless of our means. Yeah. It's that person that's less fortunate. It's that person that's less fortunate, someone that needs a hand up. And And there are people out there less fortunate. I don't care who you are, where you're at. You were born in the United States. Most like most of our listeners are in the United States. We we say this all the time. You've already (laughs) won the lottery. Right. (laughs) Right? Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, I think this has a perspective that is important about the present side of this, which is, you know, we are stewards of the gifts that God gave us. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, I'm getting theological here, but it is important to remember that that, you know, we're given this responsibility. Yeah. Okay. And it is God given. And we, we have to make sure that we don't squander it. Yeah. And I, I think practical ways that from a financial planning standpoint, right? Practical ways that this, this shows up Mm -hmm. when we meet with clients. So I'll put it this way. Uh, Mm -hmm. I meet with a lot of clients that are in my age range. Sure. In my, you know, in my bubble. right? Right. So, um, that, it makes sense, right? Everyone's Whereas, doing great, right? right. And, and what, I, what I hear a lot from people my age is, I don't want to make the money mistakes that my parents made. I mm-hmm. want to be financially independent. I want to be successful. I want to be independently wealthy. And the hardest thing about financial planning is actually, and I don't want this to be cheesy because I think it's, it's kind of expected to talk to a financial advisor and they're going to talk to you about your goals. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. really hard to define. But here's the deal. When your goal is, I want to be wealthy. I want to be financially independent. Okay, great. I get it. Why? Exactly. Why? What does money mean to you? What can it do for you? And sometimes to, you know, the person across from me to their exhaustion, I'll say, but why? For what end? Like you can say all the things that that sound right, Mm -hmm. right? I don't want to be in debt to anybody. I want to be able to take care of my family when I retire. I don't want to be a burden to my kids. Okay. Those are all good things, but like what identifying actual goals. Right. right? And without I want to saying paint, that, ex- you, you just, you, the money becomes the end all be all. I had an interesting appointment with a client roughly my age, mm-hmm. starting a business, wanted some guidance on those, those types of things. Mm-hmm. And when we really drilled down, it, it took a lot of questions, but what we got into is, but why, but why, what does this do? What does this business do for you? And it right. was ultimately it fuels the nonprofit that I want to start. Bingo. There right. it is. Exactly. Right? There, there's purpose. Okay. So And I think most of us are able to kind of get to some kind of financial conclusion like that. Okay. It might be again, like you said, the example, paying for your kids' education, things like that. Most if it's the pursuit of the dollar. Which Ebenezer's pursuit was the dollar, right? Right. And so the pound. The pound. <laughs> you know, tuppence, it's tuppence. So it's just tuppence. <laughs> great quote. Oh man. Yeah. So like it's just it doesn't, one, you're probably not going to work with us very well. Mm, okay. Probably not. But also, that's empty. Otherwise, it's that's just a boring. Scrooge life. Yeah. It really is. Right. So, this is a, man, a really good, maybe I think this episode is better than it really is. <laughs> a really good segue into the ghost of Christmas future, future or yet to come, whichever rendition you read or watch. Often portrayed as the scary Grim, the Grim Reaper. Reaper. Yeah, yeah, the ones that my kids are like, okay, we're done watching this movie. Yeah, this got real serious. <laughs> Why are we in a cemetery? <laughs> Here, here's what I wrote down, okay? There is always time to recalibrate and get on track, right? Even if you're later in life, you can change course. Here's the deal. Everyone leaves a legacy, like it or not. Wow. I, I hate to say, wow. I, I hate to end this like cheesy and say, what legacy are you going to leave? I don't mean that, but everybody (laughs) leaves a legacy. Okay. And look, I think if you're listening to this and if you've listened to us in the past, yeah, we do a podcast about money. We're financial advisors. It's important. It's not the end all be all. You you leave a legacy, like it or not. What's your legacy going to be? Man, we could be really cheesy with this, Jason, and go, legacy planning. We're financial planners. (laughs) Is your will in order? Do you have a trust set up? Yeah, yeah. All All that that boring stuff. stuff. But I, I think at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you can't take it with you. That's right. I tell clients as, as a financial planner, first of all, if, if you have an expiration date printed on you somewhere, great. I can, we can really do a good job if we know when you're going to pass away. Because mm-hmm. to do a good job, that would be to spend your last dime on your last day or at least have the money accounted for in some Correct. way, right? Yeah, right. You know, we're all going to face that day. Father time is undefeated. That's right. What's the legacy we're going to leave? I think it goes back to what you said before. We're all given talents. We're given gifts. We're given 
we're given resources and we have to be mindful of how we spend those things. We're, we're responsible to be good stewards. So I, I think this is a good part of financial planning is really what's the legacy you want to leave. Well, and I this, don't, is, this comes down to like that, like, all right, New Year, Christmas, we anticipate the coming. We do all of that stuff. It's so important. Okay. It's foundational to what we believe in. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it's an opportunity and that opportunity to reconcile relationships that might be damaged and know that the future can be totally different. Mm-hmm. And now just because someone doesn't want to participate in that doesn't mean that you're not, the attempt isn't worth it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, call your grandma, talk to your parents. And it, it's very hard to think that way, but it is the legacy that you're talking about leaving. Also as financial planners, Jason, this is, it is along the same topic, a little bit different trail here, but we have seen families broken up over money in our (laughs) careers, right? I've had, and and then we see people who fight over money that die Yep, and leave things unresolved because of money for crying out loud. Don't let money be the reason that you, you know, throw your life away or ruin relationships. Well, and if you're in a, a position where you can, kind of control what could happen after you're gone. Mm-hmm. Take those steps. Well, and I also say, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about legacy planning and what happens after you're gone. How's your money handled? But you and I are in agreement on this. I think you know, we, we have been in the past, at least. I think that there is there's kind of a bird in the hand, two in the bush mentality. Yeah, it's a it's a great idea to leave money on and, and be charitable after you pass. But for crying out loud, don't you want to see what good you, you can do with with your resources while you're around. Yeah. And I think about what the ghost showed Scrooge. Mm -hmm. Okay. He showed, you know, tiny Tim passing away. He showed his own death. I mean, like he showed like, and what was Scrooge's legacy money? That's all anybody was concerned about was who's getting his money. Who's going to get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's, this is a sappy episode. Yeah. It's kind of (laughs) getting me in the feels. I can see it. Yeah. It's (laughs) making me, maybe it's the wine. I don't know. I don't drink wine very often. This is really good. Yeah. Uh, No. So like I have a quote. Okay, cool. I like quotes. It's a good one. It's from the book. Wait, which book? (laughs) (laughs) Have another rum punch. I mean, uh, whatever this punch (laughs) is called. Uh, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. I love it. Yeah. It's a good book. It's Read it. a lot of good film adaptations. Yeah. And there are a lot of life lessons. And uh, again, I'm not saying make a Christmas carol your theology. Um, <laughs> please no, don't. No. Um, <laughs> use your theology to reflect but on it. But here's the thing that I always say. <laughs> You, you can find good theological truths in any good story. That's um, right. Quite honestly. True so, All right. Well, thanks for having a drink with us this week, folks. It's time to close out the tab. If you have a question or a topic you want addressed on the Old Fashioned Finance Podcast, be sure to email us at podcast at bluejfg.com. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to share the show with someone you love or just someone who needs a little money muddling themselves. You can stay up to date with the latest action by following us on Facebook. Old Fashioned Finance is brought to you by Blue Jay Financial Group. That's bluejfg.com and produced by Pottery Studios. We've been your hosts, Marley and Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>Blue Jay Financial Group, LLC. Blue Jay is a registered investment advisor registered with the state of Ohio. Registration does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The presence of this advertisement on this podcast shall not be directly or indirectly interpreted as a solicitation of investment advisory services to persons of another jurisdiction unless otherwise permitted by statute. Follow up or individualized responses to a consumer in a particular state by Blue Jay and the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation shall not be made without first complying with jurisdiction requirements or per- pursuant and applicable state exemption. All verbal and written consent on this presentation is for information purposes only. Opinions expressed herein are solely those of Blue Jay, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to other parties' informational accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with an advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation.